Welcome back, Bill. This is the uh, hot seat version. <laughs> I'm ready. For, I'm ready show. for. I'm ready for stuff now. And and you know what? You're going to get double teamed tonight because I've got a guy sitting here that's going to help me out on this interview. He's got lots of questions for you as well. Cool. So you have been to Colorado. You have been to New Mexico since you were last here, and yeah. you finally came back home to Texas. Bless your heart. <laughs> and really, most of that happened because Susan wanted to be by her son, who lives in Rowlett. Oh, okay. So we're eight eight or nine miles away from him. Okay. And she's still working on him. As he's he's a good, good guy. He's going to be a great kid as he gets older. Um, but she likes to keep tracks on on him a little bit yeah which you you know mama yeah i understand do that they do no matter how old you get you're still their baby pretty much uh-huh <laughs> and, and i really don't have a lot to say about it because I, yeah he's not mine in any way matter of fact a bunch of years ago i kind of when my first marriage i kind of made the decision after i had been diagnosed with ms that i was not going to probably have kids mm -hmm. and uh my second wife actually had a hysterectomy so that was not a problem okay but um, my first wife, I don't know, we might have, we might have, but I, I really kind of kiboshed it because I didn't want to propagate it. Yeah. And there's the genetic part of it, you know. Right, right. And to have somebody, you have to deal with that. On the other hand, of course, 35 years with MS, I can still walk, I can still play the guitar, I can still sing. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not in pain. I'm the only person I know that's never had pain with my MS. Wow. I have spasticity in my legs sometimes. Uh-huh. Two on a scale of one to ten. I think it might be your state of mind. You don't. You don't give to do into it. it. It has yeah. a lot to do with it. It's. It's. Uh, no. The first thing that the the internist said to me was, um, "I have good news and bad news for you. You. You did. The good news is you didn't have a stroke. You don't have cancer, mm -hmm. and you don't have a tumor. Mm -hmm. You. Pro bad news is you probably have multiple sclerosis, and you're going to live a normal lifespan. And when she said that to me, I just went. Okay. She said, you're just going to have trouble getting around. You may have cognitive issues eventually. You've got chronic fatigue. It's going to be spasticity is going to happen. All those things have happened. Right. But because she said, you're going to live a normal lifespan. And I was 31 when I got diagnosed. Okay. I'm six, going to be 67 in May. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. I'm taking it like it is. And I, because of running MS support groups for the MS Society for 20 years, I've seen everybody. I've seen quadriplegics. I've seen people you wouldn't know they had a problem, mm -hmm. and they had to deal with it. Right. My groups are always uh, talking groups. We don't have educators come in and teach us how to do stuff we all know about because we all live with the damn thing. Right. And uh, we just vent, talk about stuff, and it's the best way to run a support group. If right. Who I've seen. And give suggestions on how to make things better that you found help you in your life, and that can yeah. pass on to other people and make a big difference, I'm sure. I have an entire spiel that I go into. It's about seven minutes long, so I'm not going to do it here. <laughs> but basically, basically, I tell them the, the, just, just, the gist of it is that um, when I got my poker hand with MS, I got three aces in the draw. Uh -huh. I dropped those two cards off, and I got another ace. That's a good hand. Yeah. That's going to probably not be beaten for by a lot of hands. Uh-huh. And that's because I never had the pain that a lot of people I know. My second wife actually had MS. We met at my support group. Oh, okay. And she lived seven on a scale of one to ten. She had a methadone uh, a prescription that she used constantly. Mm -hmm. And it didn't just, she, she'd say it would just dull the pain for her, basically. Right, wow. We don't need to talk about this much. <laughs> no, yeah. we don't. Let's just talk saying. about your songwriting yeah. and all these new songs that you've got. And you have a new album. So tell us about it. Well, I can I can show it to you. This is the new album. This picture on this the front of this is also on my shirt. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> and that's my Maine Coon Willow. She was sitting up on the table looking out, and I took this picture with my phone, and I and I put it into Photoshop, and I told it to posterize it, and it put all these colors in here. Oh, nice. And it turned it into a work of art. It's beautiful. Yeah. I love it. The thing about the album, though, is mainly it was I, I, my last album came out in 2010. Tom Prasada Rao produced it, matter right. of fact. And uh, I mean, I had songs since then. I should have had another album out, but when Susan and I got together, it started saying, "Knocking on my door, I, let's go, let's go." So I started working on uh, on getting the songs prepared. I do Pro Tools at home now on my on my in my office, 
And um, I called my friend Dave Nachmanoff. I don't know if you know him. Uh-uh. Yes. He's, yeah, Dave's, a, Dave's uh-huh. been an old friend from, I think California. I met him at, yeah, yeah. I met him at uh, Davis, I think, Davis, California. I met him at the uh, Falcon Ridge Folk Festival in Hillsdale, New York, a bunch of years ago, like 98. And we bonded and had a good time together. And when I came around to wanting to do this album, I wanted to find somebody that could, I, I could afford. And I went to Dave, and he he basically said, I, I want to do this for you. I want to do this because I've always loved your voice, I've loved your guitar work, and I love your songs. And I said, okay. And he gave me quite a quite a good thing. And I, actually, I did a Kickstarter to pay for it. But uh, he basically played just about everything yeah. except for my guitar and my vocal. Wow on the album and you when you hear it you'll love it it's oh i can't it's, wait it's it's not like a real studio recording but it's it is all done in my little studio and in his little studio mm-hmm. and in a drummer studio in california and a lady who sang some harmonies in minnesota wow we've never met <laughs> other Isn't than that me great? and Dave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. anyway the songs when i started when susan and i started getting together I loved what she did, and of course, be, being a poet, you have to be able to work your meter to be able to get it to work for songs. Mm-hmm. And she was very open about letting me mess with them a little bit, and I I didn't change that many things, but I basically I had to 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 make the thing come out as a song. I get it. Been there, done that. <laughs> and she's she's my she's my favorite co-writer. I don't have that many, but she's <laughs> she's my favorite person. A question on that. <laughs> um, on that co-writing, now she's the lyricist. Yes. And you come up with the melody and the the music to those lyrics. Yeah. And a lot of times, I will still I'll still write maybe ten percent of what's there. Mm-hmm. For instance, on the Mayrose song, the bridge in that song, I wrote that. Okay. She wrote everything else, and I took it word for word. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a bunch of and like I was telling you earlier, um, sh- her writing is so good that I have written better songs since then of my own. It's interesting. Yeah. It's just they they come out better, and maybe I'm looking at them more than I used to. Structure of the song changes possibly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, this is not going to go on the thing, but I wanted to show you something. Um, my uh, the one song that she wrote uh, when we had the shooter in Boulder. Uh-huh. In the Kroger, she re- she disappeared for a while, and sh- she came back with this work. I didn't touch anything on this, but she um, she basically wrote this song, and I can I can I can, instead of actually I wanted to show you the music for it because it's I'll just show a little bit of it so. With the cock of a gun You lay on the floor Where you tried to outrun The streak of a bullet The heat from a gun You were only twenty A life just begun In Boulder, Colorado Peaceful little mountain There's snow on the mountains There's blood on the ground When I go into the bridge It starts out uh, uh, Do the sirens In the distance Come for me This vision I can see that he pulled the trigger, he held the gun. 
Now we're held accountable for the deeds he has done. Those chords are expensive chords. Wow. <laughs> They're really expensive chords. And uh, uh, the first, actually, the first take I did on it, I did in a different tuning. And I, she came out of the bedroom. And I played. I thought that I wrote this really cool thing for this eerie song, right? Right. Mm-hmm. I played it for her, and she just sat there on the couch and went, "No, mm. oh no." <laughs> I went back to the drawing board and found that. That's beautiful. It's, wow. It kills me to think yeah. about it. Wow. Anyway, the the lyric in that you can see that she's she's really got a thing. Oh, she's, definitely. Yeah. I, I just love everything she does. I wish I could get her to write more. Do you do that often where you change the tuning to maybe come up with different chords? Yeah. Um, sometimes it's chords. Sometimes it's texture. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's sound that I just want to do. I should actually, this other guitar is the one that's in a different tuning right now. Does Susan ever get um, music in her head that comes with her lyrics and she'll just you. like sing it to you? Uh, no. no. She she is not musical at all. Um she knows when it's wrong, mm-hmm. like what I did with mm-hmm. uh, right. that song. Mm-hmm. She said, that is not it. Mm-hmm. And the same with, uh, with the uh, Puff of Smoke song, right. sounding like uh, Horse With No Name. Right. She knew it was not right. Yeah. And she'd say that, and then I'd go back to the drawing board. Oh, okay. That was great. I loved that one. Thanks. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. I love doing those chords. Mm. These things, there's... There's a lot of cool stuff when you start messing with capos. At first, I didn't know why you had the, the one down there at the bottom because I thought, you know, the capo was yeah, on. This the, is on a the real six string. string. This is a real six, six string. These are both three string capos. Uh, and when I take this, if the first thing I did was I thought this is weird. I put these two together like this, and I played this. Hmm. Then I dropped it down another. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. oh my God! Huh? Wow. And then I brought okay. it to here, and took the gender out. I took the major or minor out of it, so that I had to do. Now you're thinking music theory all this time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I loved theory when I was in college. Mm-hmm. I got my first degree in uh, composition. I wanted to write. I wanted to be John Williams, write for orchestra, wow. and. <laughs> I'd never really got anything written because it's hard to get people together for that. I I have manuscripts somewhere, but I'm, I'm I don't even really know where it is anymore. But when I got to the point where I wanted, I knew I was going to do music the rest of my life. It was a simple thing of doing it by yourself, mm-hmm. and a lot of these things pull out stuff that. And if you look at what I did with this one here in particular. finger to do this Mm -hmm. and that's the whole basis of my 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 teaching is i've worked with people who have had shrapnel damage uh, veterans who have lost i've had people lost fingers um you get to play get somebody to play again even with one finger and Mm -hmm. it's like my heart is full i had i had a woman come up to me at rocky mountain uh, song school one year and she said bill i'm gonna go to one of your mentor sessions i Something happened the other day, and I got asked about it. And so she came to my men- the mentor session, and she said, I had a pop in my wrist. I don't know what it was, but I can't make a bar chord anymore. And I said, okay, show me. And she, in standard tuning, she played a C chord just fine. She played a G chord. She went to the F bar, and you could just see it. You could just see this thing. Oh, wow. And I said, wait. Okay. And I took a full capo and put it on the fifth fret <laughs> and a three string on the seventh fret. And I proceeded to play her song with one finger. And she started crying. Aww. And I said, uh, what was her name? Uh, shoot, I forgot her name now. Anita. I said, Anita, all you got to do is take your songs that you are in trouble with and do this to them. Mm-hmm. Put it in a tuning and work it out. Just relearn them. Next year I saw her. I, I met, saw her. First thing I saw her was, uh, how you doing with the thing? Oh, I got 11 of my songs I can do again. Oh, wow. good. That's great. I'm happy. Have you yes. put that in a book or anything? I'm working on that. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I also, yeah, I'm so bad 
this is Rick Allison. Uh, hi, Rick. <laughs> nice to meet you, Bill. My co-pilot I've heard your name tonight. Before, okay. Somewhere along the line. Mm-hmm. No, nothing nefarious or anything. No. I <laughs> used to work at a studio. In, well, in 1980, I, I worked on uh, uh, Harry Chapin's oh, sequel did you? album. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. At uh, Criteria, but down there. But uh, your songwriting is just very so similar. The, you, just the pictures that yeah. come up you know, through the I books. love story song. I'm a Harry Chapin. I do about 20, 22 songs of his off the top of my head. Oh, wow. I actually put them in, in the place where I can actually play them. Pull this out. Get it out of my way. I'll just play a little bit of this so you can see what I do. Because I, you know the song. Ah. It was an early morning barroom And the place just opened up And the little man came in so fast And started at his cups And a broad who served the whiskey She was a big old friendly girl Who tried to fight her empty nights By smiling at the world And she said, hey bub It's been a while since you've been around where the hell you been hiding and why you look so down? I got all of those. Songs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Put them yeah. in places where and I can sing. You didn't hear them. sound or something? That, um, I, you know, I've all, I get accused of, of channeling him from time to time. Right. Uh, I, WLD. It, I put in uh, D tuning, D A D, F sharp A D, mm-hmm. and I put two capos down, a full and a three string, and it, it in D. D A D F sharp A D major sound right, the capo goes down and the thing goes into a minor, and all of the song all the chords that come out of it are just exactly what he wrote in that song. Were you doing the capo things before you had M S? No, um, I started the first person I ever saw doing the capo thing was David Wilcox, and he he cut up Kaiser's he cut the Kaiser capos up. So he could have just three strings covered instead mm. of five, six. And I saw him do it in the show. I thought, oh, I'm going to do that. Yeah. I cut my first Kaiser, and, and I realized that the shoves are much better for me because I yeah. I do have one song, which, by the way, is Randy's favorite song of mine, called Painted Ponies. Mm-hmm. I love that song. Mm. It's in Dadgad, and it uses four capos. Oh, wow. Do you have a minute? Yeah. I'll show you. <laughs> I'm very proud of the way this worked because it it really works. I gotta go to Debbie at first. <laughs> okay. And you just tune the I know. By he ear. doesn't even use a tuner. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I said I'm arrogant. <laughs> Yeah, I put it. I'm, I'm under my canopy at Kerrville, and it's uh, 100, almost 100 degrees, and I can't. My left side shuts down mm. from my MS. I put this full capo on the first fret because I like singing in E flat, and I put down a banjo capo on three frets up from that, and I got this. And what I'll do with this is I'll just just look for some pretty stuff with one finger. Then I put this capo down right here, and I got this sound. I gotta use this other capo because it's cut different. Stephen Stills was always good with those tunings too. You know? Yes, he mm-hmm. get those drones going. This is almost an E flat minor nine chord. That's an E flat minor nine chord. So what's happening here is the the big capo down here is, is catching the low string. This one's catching the A string. These three are caught here by the three string right. capo, and the banjo capo's catching the high string. And it builds that without oh. touching the guitar. Wow. I'll just play a little bit of the music so you can see what it's all about. Uh-huh. That's great.
I go to my chorus. One finger everywhere around. Wow. Um, I, the song that I wrote for this is called Painted Ponies, and it's uh, it was a three stanza thing I wrote a whole bunch of years ago after dealing with MS support groups. I've talked with people who were thinking about checking out, mm. and uh, the MS Society says, you call the police, you call the authorities, you don't deal with it, and I'm sorry, but I've had to deal with quality of life, mm -hmm. and so I'll talk with them. I never lost one. I'm not a therapist. I wrote this song, I wrote this three stanza thing, and it sat in my bookcase for years until I found that chord. I pulled it out, it fit perfectly. And it's, uh, um, the first verse is about a, a truck driver who, uh, a woman jumps out in front of him and he hits her and kills her. Yeah. Second verse is about um, a man living in a bed in an assisted living situation knows he's never going to get out mm -hmm. again. And the third verse is my take on it, which would be different if I had more things to deal with than I do. Mm -hmm. It would definitely, I would, I've considered it, but it's a, uh, basically a, a, it's a pro-choice kind of song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you want to pass, if you want to pass from this earth, you should be able to. Yeah. I've seen too many people that needed to do that. Right. Anyway, that's the extreme example of this. Mm -hmm. Totally extreme. And I'm, the book is going to happen. I've, I've got probably three or four chapters of it ready to go, but I, I, I want to make sure I get all the things. Because I have about eight different tunings that I, that I teach people. Um, dad, gad, diggity, gad, uh, D tuning, uh, open D, open G, uh, D major, uh, uh, D tuning, D, A, D, F sharp, A, D, uh, daddy, ad, um, <laughs> yeah, let's drop the G string down up to three half steps to E. It's amazing stuff, though. And I, I first thing I do is when I'm working on these is I, I put, I paper it all out on 15 fret chord charts. I'll put a sharpie and put in the capo scheme, and then I'll dot where my dots are, where my fingerings mm -hmm. are, and uh, I give when I teach, I give them a packet of those for each tuning, basically where to put the three-string capo that works in uh -huh. every tuning that I mm -hmm. teach them. Wow. So it's That's my great. pleasure. That's great. It's my favorite thing to do. Yep, you got to finish that book. I know. Yeah. I'm working on it. I'm gonna... And you have a writer that lives with you, so she might be able to help you out, too. <laughs> we can get in trouble that way, too. <laughs> uh, I, I asked AI one day. I went on AI chat and said, I showed them what I was doing, and they said, "Whoa, you were doing this with the capo, blah, 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 blah. And I said, wait, you got it wrong. Mm -hmm. This is what I did. Oh, you did this. Oh, well, that makes sense. What about this? Oh, wait, no, that's not right either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching AI how to do what I do, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> do you work with Song with Soldiers, that program? That I never Garden have. I know I have a lot of friends who do. Uh huh. Um, I have worked. I've sat with a few veterans because I'm, I'm sure there's some that are absolutely like you said injured and maimed and not able to play, but they want to play. I actually had one woman who was not from the service. She was actually born with no fingers. She oh, had a wow. nub mm -hmm. on her left hand that she used. She actually already played actually. But when I when I showed her how to use the three string capo, I'm sure she just jumped on it and ran because she was already playing. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, Anytime, that's I tell people when I'm teaching, and you have somebody you know that has a problem, let me know. Mm -hmm. I have a friend out in Portland, Oregon. Name is Bob Howard, and I, I he started having arthritis issues, and I showed him how to play a B minor chord with two fingers. And he's on my Patreon list. Mm -hmm. My Patreon, I have. A Patreon for the first four levels of my Patreon are for people who just want to help me out because I need the money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the last three uh, levels are for people who want to learn that kind of stuff. I've mm -hmm. got four people on $50 a month. Great. And I just, I do Zoom sessions with them. 
I show them what I'm doing, cool. and they and I'll ask them what do you what do you need from me, mm. and then they'll say it, and I'll say go do this. I'll write it up for them. I'll send it to them. I'll give them a copy of the Zoom sessions so they always have it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just it's fulfilling, totally fulfilling for me. Wow, that's enough about that. So other I than talk this, about that for a while. Other than this book that you're going to write and, and all this good stuff, what else is down the down line for you, do you think? Well, I'm planning on living another 30 years. Okay. So I'm going to be 96 good. someday, hopefully. And I'm going to guarantee you money that I'm going to have a guitar and I'm going to be able to sing still and I'm going to entertain until go. I'm 30 years older than I am now. Okay. Um, that's my plan. Good deal. Um, yeah, I, that's basically it. Yeah. I've been a musician all my life. I come to my mom when I was five years old and said, Mama, I'm going to be a musician. And she, she reminds me of it now mm-hmm. every time I see her. And by the time I was in, I used to sing in the church choir. I was a boy soprano. <laughs> Those days are gone. <laughs> um, Puberty happened. <laughs> yes. Uh, when I got to the third year of Catholic school, my parents ran out of money. Mm-hmm. My, they put my brother and sister through eight years of Catholic mm-hmm. school. And um, by the time I got to fourth grade, they couldn't afford it anymore. So they put me into public school. And the first thing that happened was I took an aptitude test for music and I scored 104 points on it. Wow. And the guy looked at my embouchure and he said, you are a French horn player. And I started playing French horn in fourth grade. Wow. Played it all the way through college. Uh, I was a double major uh, uh, performance-wise, uh, voice and French horn, through my first degree. I actually got some graduate degree stuff. I didn't finish my graduate degree, but I went to Colorado, Boulder, and uh, spent three semesters there before I got tired of them telling me what my music was supposed to sound like. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. No. but uh it's always been my thing and after my uh thankfully i had my first wife was actually a math tutor and i decided to go back to school because she had an electrical engineering degree and she worked to work at texas instruments and i moved here with her uh, after we were married and i went back to school at north texas and i got a computer science degree oh did you ended up at working at TI also. Oh, cool. The weirdest thing, but top five music school in the country, and I got a computer science degree there. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> I was at Lockheed Martin. We might have worked on some projects. Very possible. <laughs> I was in Harm. I remember Harm. There's a couple of those things uh-huh. I remember I'm probably right. not supposed to talk about. Yes, right. Uh, but uh, when I turned, uh, in 2004, I started having cognitive difficulties. Mm-hmm. I was a Unix system administrator. And I was I did that for 12, 13 years, mm-hmm. and I was good at HPs. I was the only HP expert in the entire Western United States, oh. and I would have to go places to help people. About 2003, I started having trouble remembering what I knew mm-hmm. and then having trouble looking up what I knew mm-hmm. in a book. And finally, in uh, February of 2004, 2004, I went out on disability. And... I was out on disability until I turned 65, and then they took my disability money away because it only goes to 65. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. That's why I had That's to start the Patreon. Social Security kind Social of Security in. is supposed to kick in. Of course, they're paying Social Security that whole time sure. because they, the, the disability company only pays about half of what mm. you get. And I, I actually paid for a 60% uh, tax-free thing that I, I held until a year and a half ago. Mm. And now I have... I, they found a pension for me at, at Raytheon, which is that great? what bought TI. <laughs> wow. And it's saving my butt now. You oh, bet. wow. You cool. bet. I wish I'm, that I'm, would come back. I know. I don't know why. I didn't even know I had it. And they, Thank you, I, Jesus. <laughs> I know. I got a, I got a, a message from somebody, and they said, by the way, do you know you have a pension with T- Raytheon? I said, no. And they sent me paperwork. I filled it out, and it said $99,800 you have. Really? Yay me! <laughs> so, I turned it into a monthly. Yeah. And if I live thirty more years, I'll I'll make more money back than they ever than they ever put into it. Yep. Oh yeah. wow! What a concept! Another reason to <laughs> live to ninety six. There you go. Okay. Yes. 
Do you have any more questions for him, Rick? Uh -uh. No? Nope. Do you have anything else you want to chat with us about? Gosh, they had, I talk a lot, don't I? <laughs> no, that's good. I, I'd much rather talk with somebody that talks back than me having to pull teeth, oh, you no know? Kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I could give you my seven minute spiel. That's too much. <laughs> you, you can do whatever you want. This is your your interview. So when you I, live in Dallas now? I live in uh, Rockwall. Rockwall. I still run the group in uh, Plano at West Pro, uh, Plano Presbyterian Church. Oh. It's been going on there since the 80s. They've, wow. They've been a real good church for the group. But uh, basically I'll tell them, you know, when, you first, when you're first diagnosed with MS, the, what's the first thing you know? The first thing you know is that everything's going to change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't get a choice. You don't get to choose what changes. Mm -hmm. You will lose things. You will gain things. But when you lose something, for instance, uh, riding a bike, I can't do it. My balance is awful. Yeah. I can't ride a bike, so what do I do? I grieve over it. I go through the stages of grief. I can't do it anymore. And then I look for the next thing that I can do and go and do it and do it as voraciously as possible mm -hmm. until it may even go away someday. Mm -hmm. If you do that and you live in this world with a chronic illness, unless you're having a lot of pain, mm -hmm. pain is the wild card. Yeah. And I never, like I said, I've never had pain with it. So basically when I lose something, I get, I get to go through those grief stages. I've never lost this, thankfully, and I don't think I will. I don't think you will either. Because it's still, it's my exercise, basically. Mm-hmm. It's all I can really do because I can't stand long enough to exercise. Do you play any other instruments? I uh, used to. Well, French horn I used yeah. to. French horn, um, yeah, but I mean like piano or anything like that? I I mess with piano. Uh -huh. um, I use MIDI to do a lot of mm -hmm. things on my on my Pro Tools, um, but I'm not fluent. Yeah. And I'm fluent in this thing pretty mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I've got a mandolin. I used to play bass with groups, and I still record bass every once in a while. But uh, most of the time, it's just me and the guitar. Mm -hmm. And uh, my best friend. Yeah. That's by far my best wow. friend. I'll tell you, you are an absolute blessing to so many people yeah. and so Thanks. talented. And you just keep on getting better and better. And I'm, it just does my heart so good to see you in this place. I'm so glad to be, glad to be back. Yes. And stay in Texas, by God. This is where you need to I'm be. I'm pretty sure, you know, we moved to Colorado in 2019, and then we were there for 15 months before she lost her job. Uh -huh. She had a house in Taos, so she moved down there and started working down there. Uh -huh. And I picked all of our stuff up from here and moved it all the way down. <laughs> 2,800 square foot house. 1,400 square foot. Oh, wow. oh boy. That's a lot of fun. it went into storage units. Right. And then the well broke after about three, two and a half years. And she finally put it up on the market and we sold it, got what we wanted for it. And even with no water? Yeah. Well, we had to actually buy, we had to have them with the four families, we had to pay for it, a new oh. one put in. Oh, okay. But we knew that we were not going to stick around. She also got to the point where she was afraid. She didn't. She couldn't walk the dog anymore because she was afraid of coyotes and uh -huh. bears. And I never saw a bear there, but she uh -huh. said she seen bear scat. Oh, okay. Said, Whatever. Yeah. But uh, she got she got a bunch of reasons why she wanted to get out of there. We still love that area. And mm -hmm. You can always visit. That's I'm, a good thing. You it'll, know, it'll be good. I still have friends there that right? I see. Be careful about those wild bear over in Rockwall too. <laughs> <laughs> I hear about them. I have never seen one. No, you know, Mr. Treadway, he's full of all that. He's so. full of something. Yeah. Well, Bill, thank you for coming in tonight. It has been our absolute pleasure having you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be keeping in touch and doing some more stuff down the line. Sounds good to me. All right. Thank you. Everybody, you are in the music room. goes like this. I better take a drink before I do this because I'm not going to run out. I'm going to run out of wet. <laughs> I always like this song. 
I know, it's your favorite. I never saw her. She stepped out from behind that semi trailer. The thump and blood, her lifetime wasted. Her defining moment, I never wanted to see. Her open eyes just looking back at me. The note tucked in her pocket to let the world know. That I was not the culprit to take what she let go. She was crazy for release. She locked me in this hell. I'll see her face forever in her final yell. As life turns on dimes and carousels, spinning choices and blunt farewells, around in circles that don't go nowhere. Painted ponies, they just don't care. He said to me, "I can't stand to live this way. The quality is gone. There's no end to my suffering. I cannot go on. The sun it never rises. The flowers never bloom." And there's no doubt in my mind I'll never leave this room. So I made the call out to Dr. K. Could he maybe give me something to relieve this pain? Not for just an hour, but maybe for all time. Could you help me take my life? The choice is mine. Life turns on dimes and carousels, spinning choices and blunt farewells, around in circles that don't go nowhere. Painted ponies, they just don't care, just don't care. Been some times in my time on Earth that I've had to think about it. What is this life worth? And might there come a time that I could take no more? Would I reach the same conclusion? Close the door. But I wasn't in their skin. I never felt their loss. I didn't bear the weight of their massive cross. I respect the fact that they chose to take control of their choices. Anything else is a mistake. As life turns on dimes and carousels, spinning choices and blunt farewells, around in circles that don't go. One thing about this is you just move this one capo up and you get this.
All right. It goes like this. I better take a drink before I do this because I'm not going to run out. I'm going to run out of wet. <laughs> I know, it's your favorite. I never saw her. She stepped out from behind that semi trailer. The thump and blood, her lifetime wasted. Her defining moment I never wanted to see Her open eyes just looking back at me The note tucked in her pocket To let the world know That I was not the culprit To take what she let go She was crazy for release She locked me in this hell I'll see her face forever in her final yell As life turns on dimes and carousels Spinning choices and blunt farewells Around in circles that don't go nowhere Painted ponies, they just don't This way, the quality is gone. With no end to my suffering, I cannot go on. The sun it never rises, the flowers never bloom, and there's no doubt in my mind I'll never leave this room. So I made the call out to Dr. K. Could he maybe give me something to relieve this pain? Not for just an hour, but maybe for all time. Could you help me take my life? The choice is mine. As life turns on dimes and carousels, spinning choices and blunt farewells, around in circles that don't go nowhere. been some times in my time on earth that I've had to think about it. What is this life worth? And might there come a time that I could take no more? Would I reach the same conclusion? Close the door. But I wasn't in their skin. I never felt their loss. I didn't bear the weight of their massive cross I respect the fact That they chose to take control of their choices Anything else is a mistake As life turns on dimes and carousels Spinning choices and blunt farewells Around in circles that don't go Fun thing about this is you just move this one capo up and you get this. Mm -hmm.